In Habakkuk 2 verse 14, the prophet by the Holy Spirit gave prophecies that are very relevant to the times we live in today. The evils and darkness covering the earth makes it seem like there is no hope but actually there is hope. Where lies hope? Hope lies in the knowledge of the glory of God which is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Things are bound to change when Jesus is revealed and known by many. Through the platform of Pluru, God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna reveals Jesus in his teachings. Be blessed as you listen to this series, Understanding the Finished Work of Christ. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Amen. We give God praise for another privilege to be in His presence again to share fellowship with the Holy Spirit and to go deep into God's Word. We find God for the blessing of revelation into His Word. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. Amen to Jesus. I won't take it for granted. Amen. Amen. We will never take it for granted. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Okay, we are going to God's word. We began our teaching on uh, the spirit of adoption. And uh, we started off uh, to, uh, two weeks ago. And uh, we we're supposed to uh, finish the second part last week, but we couldn't finish because we are brought in uh, by the Holy Spirit who began to speak the words he wanted to speak. And so we have to continue from where we stopped uh, last week. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. We learned quite a lot. Amen. We learned that eternal life is God's life given to us to make us new creations. And as new creations, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. As the Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man be in Christ, is a new creation, a great creature, all things are past away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. And then verse 21, because you see 2 Corinthians 5 says, uh, For he had made him to be seen for us who knew the sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen to Jesus. Holy Spirit, grant us revelation into your word today. Grant us deep insight in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We also learn that a new nature and status once again makes us children and heirs of God, which Adam lost in Eden. And we understood some, uh, something last week that in Eden, God breathed into Adam the shaman and he became a living soul. The breath is the shaman, which means a vital, violent breath. It means spirit, soul, intellect, divine inspiration. Amen to Jesus. And that breath happens to be um, the Holy Spirit that was breathed into Adam. Amen to Jesus. And he became a living soul. He became a, a creature of his kind. He became a, a, a distinct creature. Amen to Jesus. Yes, although no other creature was of his kind, amen to Jesus, but he was a distinct creature. Every other creature were plant life, animal life, climatic life, uh, but he was the only human life, amen to Jesus. He became a distinct creature, a uh, new of his kind. Praise God forevermore. Now, but we understood that. In the new creation, that God did the same thing he did to Adam, uh, to the new creation. And by doing this, he gave, uh, he gave up to us his life in the person of Jesus. And so, Colossians 2 verse 9 says, In Christ, well, in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, so in Christ is the Father, in Christ is the Spirit, and in the Holy Spirit, in Christ is his own Spirit, amen, which is the Son, amen, to Jesus. Now, in Adam, God gave Adam his Spirit, the Father, Give Adam his spirit, amen, to Jesus. Now, but in the new creation, we are giving the fullness of the Godhead. The new creation is giving the fullness of the Godhead. That is why the new creation is a wow. It has never been seen before. Amen to Jesus. That's why the new creation is a higher class than the first Adam. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. And then we will understand that. And if, that as a new creation, we are, we are children of God and heirs of God. Romans 6 verse 17 says, And if children are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, it should be that we suffer with Him, that we may, all, we may be also glorified together. Amen to Jesus. So it makes us heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In Adam, Adam was a heir of God, but he was not a joint heir with Christ. I mean, I'm saying, yeah, he was a heir of God, but he was not a joint heir with Christ. But the beauty about the new creation, that's why the new creation is a wow. It's, it has never been seen before. He has never, the new creation is not just a heir of God, it's a joint heir with Christ. That's why we are higher than Adam. Are we together? How we should understand this. Now the purpose of these revelations is because the church is we need to take her place. 
The devil cannot stop the church. We are metamorphosing and we are coming to the fullness of, of time and the fullness of age. And we're coming to the time when the power of the age to come is going to be made manifest. We'll have a taste of it in our time. Amen to Jesus. We saw it if he did the world. We saw it if he did the devil. And we run him out of cities, out of towns, out of villages, out of houses. We are set to do that and he can't stop us. No matter how much he tries, he can't stop us. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so the new birth makes us children of God by redemption from sin. Uh, but this is not the zenith of redemption. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, most of us stop at um, new birth. Most of us stop as children of God. Being children of God is not the zenith of um, of the new birth of redemption is not a hallmark of redemption. And actually, that is not what ultimate desire for us. Because if that is the ultimate desire of God for us, the moment we get born again, we have to be removed from the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? He's not his almost desire. His almost desire for us is to go beyond children, is to go beyond new birth. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And this is why it is not enough for us to remain as children of God because it deprives us from enjoying our rights and privileges in Christ. Do we are heirs of God? Are we together? Yeah. Now, when we remain children, we are not different from servants. Galatians 4, verse 1. I'm going to read it to Galatians 4, verse 1 to 5. This has been made our emphasis scripture for this teaching. Amen. Galatians 4, verse 1 says, Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, do he be Lord of all. Lord, grant us in revelation in the name of the Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, breathe your word upon, breathe upon your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now it's important we know that um, if we choose to remain children, we are living in a limited life. Are we together? And what does that limited life entail? Being heads but not getting the privileges of being heads. Are we together? And it's the most frustrating life one can live. It's the most frustrating life a Christian can live. A lot of Christians are living that kind of life today and they are blaming God or blaming the devil or blaming their pastor. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. But you know the funny thing. Um, uh, once we go on, we see that your pastor is just a tutor and governor, and by right, you are put under him because you are still a head that is a child. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. By the moment you grow up to maturity, you are meant to be under his leadership or working with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Now, for example, when children are born, they are what everything that he says is final, everything mommy says is final. They don't even, they don't get explanation. But as they begin to grow, what happens? You don't you, you don't just say hey, don't do this, don't do that. It doesn't work like that again. You have to explain why you don't have to do it and why you don't do it. That's like only people parents have a problem raising children when they get to their teenage age. And I even say you have to explain why and why and why. You have to be able to converse with them. See, one of the things I hate the most is to is to pastor children forever. They drain you and frustrate you. You will never grow. You will never grow. I remember a pastor friend of mine, he told me, when he invited me to minister in this church, I missed the first day, and we were blessed. And uh, then, he invited me, he said he had a 21, 21 days um, revival, is that also? And then, he gave me the team of the revival, and uh, I missed for the first, he told me to miss out for the first seven days. Every day, every evening I was ministry, seven days. By the help of Holy Spirit, there was no drying, there was no problem. The, the, the originality of God of my life was fresh. And that was the period when my wife gave birth. She gave birth and uh, I had to do uh, the, 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 the market uh, shopping and do the house chores and then also prepare for the teaching and go and teach. At the point in time, she was telling me, please, I beg you, don't break down. I beg you, don't break down. And me, I was laughing, I was like, e -e -e. When, 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 when the Holy Ghost, this is a grace, so you don't break down when the Holy Ghost is releasing teachings. And so the first week, after the first week, he told me, he said, there's still one more, one more week. Old. If you like, you can come. Amen to Jesus. And after the first week, somebody met me and said, I need more. You know, my name, I need more. And I think that I'm preaching in another pastor's church on Monday, um, that Monday, that, um, from Tuesday, I will come up with him, I will continue with him. And then, I preached in that church on Monday, and then Tuesday, I came up. So two weeks stretch, I was teaching the world. And then he told me something, I was like, I told him, I think I said to prepare my children. He told me, yes, I know. He said, I was once he prepared so much to where I prepared. And as he came to the church, when he saw his congregation, it's like, the, what, the anointing breathed out of him. <laughs> and he had to change his message. Now, it takes 42 
skill and strength to see the people and see that they are children and tell them, I will train you into, into maturity. Because some of the time it's not, it, 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 you, you want to appeal to them, right? you know what I'm saying? And you want to grow them. Some of the time they appeal to say we are growing them, we end up, they, they, they end up what? Growing us. What do I mean? <laughs> if they appeal to growing them, they end up growing us below. <laughs> Amen. So they come like them, praise God for them all. And when, when, when this is the case, you discover that we do not enjoy the privileges and the benefits that God has for us. A lot of Christians are satisfied with being Christian. Being uh, children, and that is not God's desire for us. It just makes us all servants. When children of God remain children and refuse to grow, they choose to live as servants. Amen to Jesus. Who have no rights in the house? Are you getting it? Who have no rights in the house? The end result of this choice is that they are kept under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Galatians 4 verse 2 says, but, but it, uh, uh, verse, verse 1 says, Now I say that, uh, that the hair the the is the owner of the house. Are you not saying? Yes. As long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he belong, for his Lord of all, but it's not different from a servant. The servant has no rights, has no privileges in the house. But because he's a hair and he's a child, he's not different from a servant. So even his rights and his privileges, he has no right, he cannot enforce them. Are you not saying? Verse 2 says, But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Now let me understand something. The, 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 the uh, remain being a child is a gift. Remaining a child is a choice. Being a child is a gift. Remaining a child is a choice. For not to us a child is for not to us a son is giving. Being a child is 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 it's the fruit I would say is a gift because God gave birth to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? But remaining a child of God is a choice. And also, we must also understand that being a son is also a gift. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, remaining a child is a choice. And a lot of Christians have remained children and they are complaining and murmuring. And complaining and murmuring. And that's why I say that some of them come to God that they are begging God. Because they don't understand so they don't understand their rights, they don't understand their privilege. Some of them allow the devil to fed them, allow the devil to afflict them, allow the devil to tell them lies, they allow things happen to them wrongly. And just like that, why? Because they have chosen to be trained. And let me tell you, childhood is a gift and new birth. But is a choice in the process of Christian life. If you choose to be a child, there's nothing God can do, it, do for you again. He has put all the, the everything, the DNA in you to grow. He has put everything, the nature in you to grow. But if you choose to remain a child, it is your choice. And God cannot force growth on you. Are you getting what I'm saying? He cannot force growth on you. Another person says, what we have in church today is many chosen children. Another one, many people have chosen to be children. They, by choice, chosen to remain children. They've been there for five years. They are still praying the same prayers that they prayed when they got born again. They are still whining and crying the same way they whine and crying when they got born again. They have been there for ten years. They are still going over the cycles they went through since when they got born again. They are still thinking the way they think. They are still arguing and talking dogmatically the way they talk. It is their choice. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But the problem with this is that you will not get the rights and the privilege of maturity. And what God does is that when you are a child, this is what he does. He puts you under tutors and governors. Why? Because you don't understand your rights and privileges. But he doesn't expect you to remain under tutors and governors forever. When they tell you A, B, C, D. Now, it is spiritual childishness for your pastor to be the one to tell you every decision you make in life. You should have grown to a point where you should be able to come and pass pastor and pastor and say, Pastor, the Lord is saying this to me. And he's leading me in this direction. And when your pastor is yet, it's good that there's a lot speaking. Come on. Those are the kind of people that we are looking for now as pastors. That will say, Pastor, the Lord is directing me in this line in my life. And as I'm hearing it, I'm going that he's a lot telling you. Because you are saying it and you are giving me scriptures and you are balancing everything. Remember when, 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 when we were telling my parents that we were to come over to this mission field? My parents were not over there. We just came in for another mission field and then and just in two weeks with them and we said we are leaving again. But my parents were like, hey, Chibi, you see, you can stay. We are here with you. We encourage you, we support you. Just stay here and forget all the things you have been through. And I told my parents, I said, yeah. 
God told me this, God told me that. God. And then when I had listed scriptures, I read them. Not that once I start talking with scriptures, still me know. I came and I told them at the age of 25, the Lord said that she leave your house and you bless me. The youngest male child of my parents, the, uh, 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 the eldest was still in the house. The, the, my area that was, I think, was uh, uh, out of the city by that time. And I was going to say, the Lord said to my father's house. I went to the eldest and I told him also the Lord said, that some of his friends told me that while you are still in the same city with your parents, they told him to leave your father's house. I said, that is your, uh, as, uh, I didn't say anything. But my mother said, that is your friends, what they told you. Me, this is one God that's told me. My mom is that I don't move with one friends, tell me, I move with one God tells me. And my parents said, all right, if God said it, we cannot stop it, go. And the Lord fulfilled his word to me. He fulfilled it. And you cannot say, now, I, I, whenever I talk with my parents, and I want to make a major decision in life, I, to hear God, not because um, um, uh, uh, they will not allow me to participate, but because number one, they are, they are ministers of the gospel. <laughs> you get up and say, I want to do this, and if you want to do this, I pass no, 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 no. They are, they, are, they are ministers of the gospel, they are pastors. So for me to be able to present my case before them, it has to be on the basis of the word of God, else that will be rebellion. Are you understanding? To be rebellion, even though, yes, I'm of age, but I should not still rebel. We have a lot of children who rebel, not in the name of a crew. I'm a man. He's still rebellion. Whether you are a man or a woman, you are, you are still rebelling if it's not on the basis of scriptures. So at this point, we need to make a limited times where, where children should grow from children where they can be telling their tutors and governors, this is what the Lord is saying. And we two of them see that you are, if you told them the first one, it happened. The second one, it happened. The third one, it happened. But the fourth one, when you are coming to say, hey, it will happen, you are a prophet already. And what I want to know is, hey, let me, let me join my faith. Let me, let me join my faith too. Because you told them one, two, three, and they see that it is scriptures and it's happening. Now, see, this one is a prophet. He's a man of God already. He's a man of God. So let me join my faith. So he's a man of God. What are they coming to do? But we should get to the level in church where we call it, where it will not be pastor and members. It will be man of God and man of God. Amen. That's the level God is taking us to. And now, uh, uh, who are these tutors and governors? What tutor is from the Greek word Epitropos. 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 And it means Taylor defines it as one to whose care or honor anything has been instructed. Number two, a, cost, a curator or a guardian. Number three, a steward or a manager of a household or of lands and overseer. And it also means one who has the care and tutelage of children. Either where the father is dead, that is a guardian of minors, or where the father is still alive. So a tutor basically is a what? Is one who to whose care or under anything has been instructed. So someone who has been given the go ahead to take care of a, a child. Are you getting what I'm saying? Either a guardian or a teacher or a manager. Amen to Jesus. Now, so when the child remains in here, God puts him under a manager. Why he cannot do this? He doesn't know his left from his right. And a lot of Christians, two, 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 five years into Christianity, they don't know their left from their right. So they, they still need guardians. They need uh, tutors. 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 Some of them think they know, but they don't even know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Remember once uh, on our missions, one of our missions, uh, one of our uh, uh, please go all of that uh, location of London in the church. I remember uh, a member came to meet me once and he said that uh, one of our friends, she brought a friend to us, and one of our welcome friend, said the friend came to meet me to ask to come to, for me to pray and find out whether the man who is asking her hand in marriage is the right one or not. And I asked the friend, I said, is it me that we marry the man, or is it you that will marry the man? She says she's one that will marry the man. I say, okay. But the one who marry her, she says, okay, this shoe you are wearing, can I feel you that is paining you or not? She said, no. I said, who will feel you? She said, I said, that means she should be the best person to know that he's the right person or not. Exactly. It's not me. I remember I heard this about a couple, they came to me. <laughs> there the, the, the was a crisis, long and short was that the, the lady said she's leaving the house and she divorced or whatever and then later the husband said okay he wants her back and the lady said no if you want me to come back to your to your life you have to stop attending at your church say why because say because your pastor that told us that we are fit for each other we must marry we are compatible to marry each other so you have to stop is your pastor that to learn for us Sorry, it's getting stuck. Is it that happens to children? Why should you be the one who is wearing the shirt and we tell you the shoe to wear? Why? That happens to children. So children, 
you see, even the advice us as parents that even for when a child starts, when you start seeing some signs of choice, early stages, start asking them what do you want. Even for food, bring two. Even if when it is bottles, which one do you want? Let the child start with the power of choice. If you have to give everything to the child every time, every time, every time, you are actually de uh, destroying his or power of choice. And so when children are children, they are put under guardians, managers, they have to be managed. A lot of Christians are still being managed because they are moving disaster. Some of them, they need to, their gifts need to be managed, they don't even know. Some of them, their potential need to be managed. Some of them, their spirituality to be managed. Some of them, they, are, they just need serious management. No, they are what they call special needs kids. They have to be managed. That's, that some Christians are spe spiritually special needs kids. That have to be managed. <laughs> it's, not, it's not guardian case now. They are those who need guardian. They are those who need creators. They are those who need managers. You have to manage them. And they make a disaster. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what happens when people, when, when children, instead of growing at their pace, they refuse to grow. They begin to decline instead of progress. Then they need what? Management. Five years of being born, and by now we expect that you are supposed to be mentoring people. I was supposed to say, when you are supposed to be teachers, you are looking for who to teach you. You are a special needs case. You need to be managed. So we send you to the special needs section of the church where they have special needs case managers. So we manage you. We can't put you among others because you make a disaster. Praise God for the Lord. Number two, uh, uh, what, uh, and we were talking about tutors and governors. Number two is governors. Who are governors? Who are governors? Governors is from the, the, the Greek word oiko, oikonomos. 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 Uh, it sounds like oikonomia, which talks about building. Oikonomos. And it means the manager of a household or of household affairs. It means especially a steward, manager, superintendent, whether free born or usually the case, free man or slave. See, a slave here too. A slave can be a manager of the house. I get what I'm saying. To whom the head of the house, like Abraham had a slave, Eliezer, who was the head of his house, manager. Je Joseph was also made the slave head of a Potiphar's manager of Potiphar's house. So he, the head of the house or proprietor, has instructed the management of his affairs, the care of receipts and expenditures, and the duty of dealing is out of the proper proportion to every servant and even to the children not yet of age. You see that? So in that time, they had house managers who were slaves, trusted slaves, like Eliezer was a trusted slave of who? Of Abraham. And J Joseph was a trusted slave of Potiphar. He said, you were telling me, I give you charge of these who has, except my wife. No, that was, they, they trust them so much that they give them charge of everything. They are giving charge of everything. Even the children that are not yet of age, you can't do that now again. The wickedness of the world will not allow that. They sell your children. Yeah, yeah, that. You see all that. But those days it was that then it was it was that serious that the slave could manage the house, manage his income and expenditure, and the management of the children. Amen to Jesus. It also means the, the manager of a farm or landed estate and overseer. So it's that means a slave can be a manager. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now we're also talking about the manager of a farm of a landed estate or an overseer. It also means the superintendent of the city finances, the treasurer of the city, that's a treasurer. So we're talking about managers here. And it also, it also means metaphorically the apostles and other Christian teachers and bishops and overseers. So we see that when we're talking about governors here, we are talking about apostles, Christian teachers, bishops and overseers. We are talking about slaves that have been made managers of the home. We are talking about finance, treasurers, city financiers, uh, 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 financial treasurers, uh, controllers of finances, and treasurers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so we are talking about people that have the ability to manage, manage people and manage resources. Those are governors. You see, one of the problems we have in uh, the nations of the earth today is that we have people who are who, who do not need the qualification of governors to, that are made governors. A governor must be somebody who is who, 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 uh, who, who can be the superintendent of the city's finances. 
he can be the treasurer of a city. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That means the finances must be safe in his hands. Yes, it must be safe. It must be safe. But <laughs> I remember uh, I was coming from somewhere because of last week, whereabout, and um, I saw the taxi driver, and he, when I stopped him, I negotiated with him, and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me, are you a driver? I said, yes. Yeah. He said, yeah, I heard that your friend is so, 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 and I said, yes. It was even in the course of me that uh, Pastor said, tell me that they even want to increase it again. And he said, with all the oil yet that the country has, why is the friend still like that? Why are people suffering that? He said, Nigeria has so much resources. Why are you suffering so much? And he said, Nigeria is, Nigeria is embarrassing also. And I said, my brother, it's the same problem everywhere you go to Africa. It is the politician's problem, the leader's problem. When they come to power, they come and tell you that they need empty treasury. Every one of them comes to tell you that they need empty treasury. That means everyone that comes cannot handle treasury department. Yes. The major problem with our leaders in the nations of our governors is treasury problem. The same problem that you guys have is a problem. And we elect them as governors. When they have treasury problem, Governors have they don't meet the qualifications, but they have the money, so they, they get the, the position. This is about treasury. <laughs> if you cannot handle treasury, you cannot be a governor. And I tell you one truth: one of the truths about um, life is that the ability to handle finances also tells on your ability to handle people. Yes. If you are reckless in finances, you will be reckless in people because you will see people as money to be spent. Just like the ancients who, who see people as money to be saved, so they will do what they call, uh, 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 they, do, they do child labor, they do uh, 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 labor, they, 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 they take labor slaves, you understand what I'm saying? Because they see these people as commodities and as what money to be spent. If all money is all about spending for you, then you have a problem being a governor. Money, the first approach towards finances will be investment, not spending. And so when you have people who have a spending issue, when you have spendtrips in power, what happens is that they spend both the money and spend the people. That's why they can sell their, 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 their people for loans. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So it takes a lot of people to go. And we can see that um, we've got people that have apostles and other Christian teachers and bishops and overseers are what? And God. So when you become a child of God initially, what God does first to you to do is to put you under apostles or Christian teachers. So when you see somebody who is a teacher of God, I remember I was somebody because of me, and he was asking me some questions, and I answered them. After then, he now asked me, not to me, ask you what that question is saying because people always answer me, but I saw the answer you gave. And at the point, he now asked me, Who is your mentor? And I said, Back, I said, Looking up to Jesus, you're not finish your day. Jesus is not looking at you. And he said, Yes, I know, but there are humans, you also look at said, you, you want to put me in trouble? And at the end, he tried to go, and I told him, I have many mentors. Now, I have discovered something that everywhere that God takes me, they know there is a teaching grace. They know. People that come in contact with know that there is a teaching grace. When you have a Christian teacher, he is a governor. Yeah. He's a governor. And when people get, when, when people get born again, what God does to you, the first thing God does for you after you get born again, is to put you under a governor. Are you getting it? Any sound apostle must be a good teacher. Example, Apostle Paul. He taught for a full day. Every sound apostle must be a good teacher. Every sound bishop and overseer must be a good teacher. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because it takes the ability to teach, to govern, and to raise people. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? If you cannot teach, you cannot raise people. Because God is more interested in these babies he has than they grow up. He's not interested in populating the, the church. He's interested in growing babies. So when they get saved by the evangelist, God brings them other teachers so they can grow. So they can grow. God is interested in their growth. In their growth. In their growth. That's why the teaching ministry is very important in the body of Christ because it's a ministry that matures believers. But it is the most the, the most um, 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 Underrated ministry, and that's how life always goes. The same way teachers are the most underrated, but doctors are produced by teachers, lawyers are produced by teachers, accountants, even the politicians that don't 
I don't make allocation for teachers, I produce my teachers. You see, you look at uh, most of you see African you see that there is no fund, there is no funding, there's no allocation, there's no budget for the educational sector. You see, you see lecturers be striking. In my country, lecturers were striking. I thought it was only my community that was like, lecturers were striking yet. It's amazing how the people that taught you, you not get into power and you torture them for teaching you. It's just like your parents train you and now you now have money. You now say, for training me, I will talk. training me, I will touch on you. That is witchcraft. So when the educational sector is not being funded by political leaders, it shows the highest operation of what? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Amen. Say so when the teaching ministry is not funded by uh, by a lot of Christians, it's not serving a lot of Christians. Tell one of my students that listen to teach for long hours. But that is where maturity comes from. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, from the above definition of tutors and governors, respectively, schoolmaster, which made us see the need for Jesus, is the tutor and the governor, or both the unsaved and the newly saved. And this is the law. You understand what I'm saying? Now, we're coming from before we got saved and when we got saved. Now, that is, there's a schoolmaster that made us see the need for Jesus. He made us see the inability of the law to save us. And that schoolmaster is called what? The law. Now, after the law, then we have new governors and teachers, uh, 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 tutors and governors. That are what? Those are our past, our teach, uh, Christian teachers, our bishops, our seers, our past apostles. Those are the new ones that come to us, that God gives to us. But before we get saved, and when we get saved, he gives us what? He gave us what? The law. Galatians 3 verse 24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Another translation says the law was the what? Was a slave. The school slave. In those days, they have slaves who they, uh, who they assign to take their children to school. It's the same tutor kind. You see, what about tutors and governors? When you think about teachers, but you see, one of the laws for tutors was a slave that had was giving charge, a manager, charge of the house, even the children that are what? Minors. So in those days, the slave that, that they trust the most, like Eleazar, was trusted by Abraham, and his, Abraham sent him to get a wife for who? For his son Isaac. That slave takes the child, the children to school. And when he gets to school, he drops them at school and goes back. His job is not to continue staying with them in school. The law was to take us to school. What is our school? The school is who? Jesus. And he was to drop us at Jesus. Then go back. But today, what we have is that the law has taken us to Jesus, and some of us will have carried the law into school. Are you not saying? So we're taking the law into Jesus. But no, that's not what it's going to be. Are you not saying? Say, wait for the laws as schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ. And when he brings us onto Christ, what do he do? He stops there. That we might be justified by faith. When we get, the law brings us to Christ, he stops there. And then Christ continues from there. He justifies us by what? Faith. But if we are taken by the law to Christ and we say no, we don't want the law to go back home, let him continue following us to school, then it has some other people to bring to school. We will deprive it from what? Bringing others to school. And that's what the church has been doing today. We have held so much onto the law, even in, the, even in Christ, and the law is meant to be bringing others. We say no, don't want to bring others. Let's remain here with you. Amen to Jesus. Now this was why God the Father gave Jesus to redeem us from the schoolmaster. And the reason why he did this was so we can be adopted by him as sons and no more be servants, though we are his children. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, so Jesus, God, 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 see, the Lord wants to bring us to Christ, either as unbelievers or when we get born again, there's a revelation of the Lord bringing us to Christ. Now, it was meant to stop there. Now, for it to stop there, the Father sent the Son. So the Son will do what? Collect us from the law. Watch this. Now, this, we, we, last week we left, last week we left about new birth. New birth is that we are collected from sin, salvation. Jesus came collected us from sin. From the nature of sin, from the devil. Are you not saying? Yes. Are you not saying? Now, also, the, he also collected us from somebody. Now, collecting us from sin is new birth. It makes us friend of God. But now, when he collects us from the law, he brings us into the place of adoption. That's what we call sons. Now, so when a lot of people have been collected from the devil, they have allowed Jesus to collect them from 
from the devil as a, a salvation, redemption and salvation, but they have refused Jesus to collect them from the law. So they are taking the law to the school and they are told the law, don't go home. But the law says, I have tax to do. Master, your, your father gave him more tax to do. He said, no, daddy can complain what he wants to complain. It's been a few months, still a few children that they don't want to, they don't want their guidance to go. Hey, the whole of them, they are going to, ah, they'll be crying and crying and all the go. That's the law of Christian being. Crying babies that never grow. When you come to school, leave your guardian to go home. And go and work and bring money to pay your school fees. Can you not say? When the Lord drops you at the school called Jesus, allow the Lord go back. Why? Because there are other people the Lord has to bring. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So Jesus collects us, redeems us from the law. The act of redeeming us from the law is called the act of what? Adoption. Yes. We learned about adoption in the first teaching. Praise God for God. Hallelujah. So now look at Galatians 4, verse 3 the says, Even so, when we were children, were in bondage under the enemy. Of the world. He had this. We didn't say when we were unbelievers. Watch this very well. He didn't say when we were sinners. And you get what I'm saying? Yes. Now, when we were sinners, we were in bondage under the elements of the devil. The nature of sin. And you get what I'm saying? But now, when we are children, we are still in bondage. Childish childhood is a bondage. That's why that the average child wants to be free. Is that also? Let me, let me, leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. Leave me. Rather say, leave me. I want to, I want to wear my shoe. I want to write. I want to, they want to, they want to, they want to write. Because for them, you are putting them in bondage. That's why when they become teenagers, they are the confused stage of their life. They are neither children or adults. But at that point, that's why they want to experiment. They want to be free. I you know what I'm saying? Childhood is bondage. In the physical, it is. In the spiritual it is. And in the spiritual, when we are children of God, it is not enough. Why? Because as children of God, we are still in bondage. And what bondage are we? We are in bondage of the elements of the world. The elements of the world are the elements of the world. We have, we have, uh, there are four major elements, um, light, fire, water, and um, earth. I you know what I'm saying? But actually, when you speak into the earth, the earth controls every of these elements. The elements, the elements of the world, these are the four major elements, and there are other elements that uh, reveal themselves. You can see that when we remain children, these things can keep us in bondage. They can confine us. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the reason why we must not remain children. So, okay, then, verse, uh, verse, verse 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent what his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of so. Watch this very well. Hear this. Hear this now. This, this redemption here is not for sinners. So. Now, when we read this video, we think that it is for sinners. No. Now, if you, if context is very important. Context is very important. Now, the, 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 the text that says, even so, when we were children, we're not talking about, we're not talking about when we were sinners. Bible says, for God commanded his love to us, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That one was clear there. It was clear. While we were yet what? Sinners. Christ died for us. John is saying, for God so loved the world. World, there was world in whole world, which includes the fallen world. Human beings, animals, made up the world. It was falling. That he came to the only soul. But now he didn't talk about world here. He didn't talk about what? Sinners. He said, for even so when we were children, in bondage under the elements of the world. We're children. But children in what? Bondage. What bondage? Under the elements of the world. We're born again, yes. But we're still in bondage under the elements of the world. We could not manifest our true identity. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But I'm saying, but when the fullness of time was come, now, what, how do you say, but Pastor, what, what are you trying to say? Then he says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent God his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Now, you say, but Pastor, we're talking about God sending his son again. Now, but look how he says, to redeem them that were under the law. Not to redeem sinners. To redeem them that were what? Under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Christ redeems from childhood into sonship. The act of redeeming from childhood into
spiritual sonship is called adoption. And he redeems from childhood, and the child is under what? The law. I get what I'm saying. I say, but this, this talks about uh, God sending his son made of a woman to that. Yes, Jesus came to do that. And he did that. Why? Because we're, we're predestined. The Bible said to those who didn't predestine, he didn't what? Call. And those who didn't call, he didn't glorify. Those who didn't judge, those who didn't judge, he didn't what? Glorify. We're predestinated in God to be what? To be adopted. Are you getting me? Yes. We're predestinated to be adopted. And now when Jesus came, he died for the world, he died for sinners, but in that process of dying also, he was redeeming us from the law. The bondage of the law. And the act of redeeming from the body of the law is called the most act of what? Adoption. They were made heirs of God and joined heirs with what? With Christ. This was all told on Calvary. Are you not saying? This was all done on Calvary. It's not what Jesus is going to do. It was all done. The work has been finished. So if we are not manifesting as souls, it means we are limited in understanding and knowledge. You can ask me though. What keeps us as children is the law. That's all. Law-based, law-focused Christians are children. But Jesus actually came to redeem us from the law. And the law actually brought us to Jesus so he can redeem us. Are you know what I'm saying? Yes. Say so to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now this is why we must step up to sons and sonship. We must step up to son and sonship. And sonship only comes by the revelation and manifestation of what? Adoption. Are you know what I'm saying? If this revelation and manifestation of adoption is not made free to us, we cannot step up to sonship. You see, uh, the, teaching, the teaching of this uh, revelation is very important because we are in a time where it's, let me use the word, dying in it. And the endless expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's not the time where we have baby friendly churches. Mm. It's not the time where we have seeker sensitive churches. You can't try to have hungry bed churches. No, this is not the time we have give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me churches. The hungry bed churches, the church where they come and all they open their mouth. And they say, after that, the says, open your mouth and I'll feel it. That's not the this is not, this, this, You see, we are past that level. We are past that level. Why? Because when we have seeker sensitive Christianity, hungry bed Christianity, baby friendly Christianity, we will all be law based. And we'll be children, we can never mature to sons. You see, it's a revelation of sonship that makes you know that you don't give to receive. You give because you have been given. It's a revelation of sonship that makes you know that you do not give because you want to get. You give as a, as a show of love. Let me see what is it's a, it's a reciprocate act of love to God. So it's a revelation of something that makes you know that in the new creation and in the new testament, we don't give sacrifices. Sacrifices came as a result of the fall of man. In the new creation, we are the sacrifice. So I appreciate the prayer that makes you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In the, in, after the fall of man, the sacrifice had to be killed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But in the new testament, in the new creation, the sacrifice is alive. <laughs> it's a revelation of sonship. It's a revelation of adoption. And this kind of thing, when we teach, people look at us. Oh. It's a revelation of adoption that makes you know that you don't give to God. You actually receive from Him. Everything that looks like you're giving is actually an act of still receiving. And with that, there is nothing that God says release that you cannot release. It's this revelation. And that's where the church is still far from. And that's why we have a lot of challenges. We have the fight of tithe and offering, giving and not giving, uh, contribution and, uh, and, and uh, offertory, uh, different drug nonsense. No, because we are still children. And I'm also, I'm also saying that these children are all tossed to and fro by every weed of doctrine. Uh -huh. I, I, I will get there. Amen to Jesus. So, what is
is that also Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. I'm using 1, 2, 3, 4, about 5 translations to read this. So we'll get it clear. King James says, To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of souls. Bible basically it says that he might make them free who were under the law, and that we might be given the place of sons. That we might be given what? The place of sons. So adoption is that of being given the place of sons. So there is a place that sons have. There is a place that children have. And where is that place? It's in the heart of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's in the heart of Allah. There's a place that sons have. There's a place that children have. And it's a heart. We'll begin, as we come this year, we'll begin to talk about wheels and techno. They are Greek words. Children and sons. There's a place that children have. There's a place that God has. Adoption gives you the place of a son. New birth gives you the place of a child. Are you getting me? Yes. Adoption gives you the place of a son. New birth gives you the place of a child. And it takes growth for you to be moved from the place of a child to the place of a son. It takes growth. If you choose not to grow, you remain in the place of a child. And you will be put on that tutorial. That's not the part you know that tutorial and go for 20 years and leave body again. And I mean, Peter, you, you know, yes, you must see have pastors over you. But there's a level, like I said, there's a level where you grow. When, when you are coming to meet your man, where a man of God is calling you man of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you are coming to meet your Christian teacher, teacher is calling you teacher. Rabbi is coming, Rabbi, you are coming to read Rabbi. Rabbi is calling you what? Rabbi. We are coming to meet you over seven. We are saying it's going to happen over seven. Why? Because it looks like you are at a level of sonship, of maturity. And the reason why you are just still under their tutelage is because God just said, be there. And you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this thing, he says, we were like slaves. You see that? Under the Jewish rules. But God's son brought, brought us to make us free. So then we could become proper sons of God. That means children are, let me use the word, improper sons of God. Are you know what I'm saying? Why? Because they have made themselves slaves under Jewish rules. That's why Paul told the Peter, he told the person, no, 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 no. Eh, eh, eh. Don't come and make this food. They are not Jews, they are Gentiles. Don't come and put them under the bondage of your Jewish rules again. Why? See, you have been, if any man be Christ a new creature, these people have become new creatures. Don't burden them with the Jewish rules. They are proper sons of God. Now, don't make them be proper sons of God. Now, I have to say to, in order to redeem those who were under the law and thus adopt them as his children, New English and New says to redeem those who were under the law so that we may be adopted as sons with full rights. With full rights. With what? Full rights. Full rights. With full rights. With full rights. Is there like that word full rights here? So what is adoption? Adoption is a redemption from the law and be made proper sons of God with full rights. <laughs> it's redemption from the law. And be made proper sons of God with full rights. See, once you are law based, you are legalistic, you are still an improper son of God. Number one, you are still a child. And a child is an improper son of God. Are you know what I'm saying? And he doesn't know his rights. He may have some rights, but he will not get his full rights. Are you know what I'm saying? But a son is one that is what? Proper. And has his full rights. And it, and it reflects in the way they behave and they think. Hey, you know something? <laughs> oh, let me not go for that. So I can cover up what I have to cover today. When we get born again, that's when we get born of God. We are newborn babes who feed on the milk of God's word. This is why we are admonished to desire the sincere milk of God's word as newborn babes. Testing that to verse 2 says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of God so that you may grow thereby. When we get born again, we are newborn babes. We are, we are, we are, we are called children of God and we, we, are, we, we are to feed on the, on the word of God. Are we together? But that's not the end of it. Why? Because remaining children is a limitation. Remaining there is a limitation. Have you seen a child that the baby refuses to grow? What happens? It becomes a medical concern. Is that not so? Both psychologically and physically, it becomes a medical concern. Now, what are the characteristics of children? Number one, of babes. What are the characteristics of babes in Christ? Number one, babes are not skilled in the Word of God. And as we're talking, I've got the third one. Yeah. 
They are not skilled in the word of God. They are not skilled in the word of God. All right. Um, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 says, For everyone that useth milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. They are not skilled in the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness. Amen. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean that they are not skilled in the world of righteousness? They are not skilled in the revelation of the righteousness of God. So, so uh, 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 we are made in the that we made the righteousness of God in him. They are not skilled in the revelation of the righteousness of God. They don't know what it means to be the righteousness of God. Number two, they don't know what it means to, 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 uh, they don't, they don't know what it means to practice righteousness. Are you what I'm saying? And they will not be able to know what it means to practice righteousness because they are not skilled in the righteousness of God. That's the first characteristic of this. So you look at them, they are they are just they are just they are just not it. Are you what I'm saying? You need to, they are not it. You need to tell them do not do this, do not do that, do not commit fornication, do not commit adultery, do not commit this, do not do this. You you have is what do you what do you do with children? Hey, don't do that. Is that not so? Hey, don't do that. Hey, babies, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. Baby, hey, hey, if you leave the baby, it can carry poison and drink. Is that also? They're not skilled in righteousness. So you have to keep watching them. Watching them in their practical living. Watch them, watch them. Why? Because they are not skilled in the word righteousness. Amen. Amen. Number two, babes in Christ are carnal Christians. Carnal. Carnal. First Corinthians 3, verse 1 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Carnal. They are very carnal. All they care for is house, car, husband. Wife, children, clothes, money, school fees. That's all. That's all. What do children do? Is that not what they care for? It's, they, 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 no one doesn't like want to do any work at all. They don't work. They don't work. Just give me, give me. I'm just scared for canal peace. It's very simple. Says, sometimes I look at someone and say, ah, he bought, he bought, uh, he bought a, 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 a car worth how many millions of dollars? It, it's, not, it's not a sin. I mean, I'm saying. I'm not against it. I hear them say, Amen. Praise God. Uh, I, 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 I heard of a particular man of God who was celebrating his birthday, his ministry to the fifth anniversary or whatever. And he bought a car worth some hundreds of millions of naira there for himself. I was like, Wow, what a celebration. I hear them say, uh, What a celebration. For me, by the grace of God, I will not celebrate like that. Yeah. It's not me using that kind of money to buy a car what that. I will use that money to do crusades, to do outreaches, and then I will give to the less privileged and the needy. Are you not saying? Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Because for me, it's not a car you drive. And at the end of the that car is no longer existing, I believe. Yeah. Even if it's still existing, I come to school. But the souls would have used that money to impact, they would have remembered it in eternity. Is that also? Yes. Yeah. So they're calm now. They're calm now. They're just flesh led. They're just sensual. It's all about the flesh, the senses. It's all about the body. That's all. That's all that matters to them. You see, they, they cannot pray for, for, for five minutes, but they can watch movies for five hours. Are you going to say? They can't pray for five minutes, too, but they can watch movies for five hours. Anything that will satisfy the flesh is all that matters to them. What is that with the spirit? They say you are stressing there. Pastor, you are preaching to me. I don't have to be taking. Why can't you preach for two hours? Ah, what are we doing? What are we doing? No, two hours. Ah, ah, what are we doing? But if you leave them two hours, they can gossip. Two hours, they can gossip. You ask what are you gossiping, man? And we don't know. I, I remember the person was talking. He said he was with his family. He was, they came out to get together. And his wife's uh, sister came and they, uh, you know. And he said, hey, is this kind of quiet person? When he just finished eating, taking dinner, he has gone to the room. He said, and he went, and he came back like one month after. And he saw that his wife and her sister, and I think his sister or whatever, they were talking. All the sisters and the mothers were talking. And he went, and he came back one hour. And then the whole time we talking, he said, what? <laughs> so he said, for oh, one hour, you know we're talking nothing. Yeah, and that's it. He said, no, oh, Christian can talk nothing for five hours. If you ask them at the end of the day, what did you converse? They cannot pinpoint what they actually said. 
They ask, ah, what, the, what are the limitations? They cannot give people an education, but they can talk for one hour. But they cannot stand for anointed teaching for what? 30 minutes. I don't that. So they are calm and number two, they are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That verse of scripture, uh, it says, be not, uh, be not children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Today they hear this teaching, they run with it. Tomorrow they hear that teaching, they run with it. Next tomorrow they hear that teaching, they run. I'm not saying that we should not be open to revelation, but we must know how to test spirits. There's a spirit behind every teaching. Test the spirit before you receive the teaching. And I was talking to someone and I was thinking, when, when, when he asked me who's your mentor, and I said, okay, and I began to tell him, he said he wants to, he wants to know, he wants to know. And then I say, he wants to know, I'm always careful for them. Why? And because um, it takes a level of spiritual maturity and sonship to not say you want to know and know it to problem. Yeah. I like knowledge, but I'm also very careful as I get knowledge. I know how to see. So I gave him some materials to get the uh, coin, he coin brick by wood, he proved by the these are all I will give you for now. I said, and I gave him my teachings online now. I read you online to go and listen. I said, these are all I'll give you for now. Why? Because over the years I've learned that if you want to grow people, grow them gradually. So their brains are not mature. Their brains are not mature. I'm not talking about even their spirit, their brains are not mature. They cannot manage some kind of information. Some of them are not going to hell see. A lot of people, Christians we have today, a lot of them are confused. Why? Because they are babies. They have been tossed by here, tossed by this. Some of them say I'm confused. And I was talking to a gentleman who was a, a, a driver, an Uber driver. And he, told, he was asking questions and I kept them answers. And the answers shut them off. And he said, he said, he said in fact, he don't want to hear about Jesus again. I should not talk to him about Jesus again. In fact, I asked him, I said, not for you. I said, well, what's your name? He told me, I said, what's your story? He said, no, you're not telling me. I said, I want to be prayed for you. He said, no. Don't force you, don't talk to you about that again. I was once used to connect my church. I've read Bible from cover to cover. I said, look with my brother, you have read, but you are not. He said, I was coming and saying you are not. I know what I'm going to do when you need those people, they are so proudly, they are so confident in their foolishness. In their ignorance, they are confident. I said, you have not studied Bible for God. He said, I said, the proof that you have not studied is that you have left church. Mm. That's the proof. I said, because the Bible says in Matthew, it says, who shall separate you from the love of God? Is, but from what he was saying, it was what church people were doing that made him leave church and he has gone to shrine. I said, the proof that you, have, you don't know, he said, you know God, he said, you know God. I said, the proof that you don't know God is that you have left church. You have left Jesus, not even church. You have, he said, I not say anything about Jesus, he doesn't want to hear about it. You have left, that's the proof you don't know Jesus. Because the scripture of the Bible says, who shall separate us from the love of God? If you know Jesus, no point will separate you. But no matter what they do, do you know what they have done to us in ministry? Do you know what was seen or some seniors have done to us? Yet we are still holding on to the work. Yes. But I say, come on. You don't know Jesus. They are tossed, to and fro. Everything goes. Everything goes. They are not stable. They don't know God for themselves. Amen to Jesus. Yes. Now, due to the above characteristics of children, they can be under the law, although they are no more sinners. Are you not saying? Yes. They can still be under the law, too. They are no longer They can be under the captivity of the elements, also. And this prevents them from enjoying their few full rights of redemption, which belongs to what? Sons. Sons have been redeemed from the law and adopted. They know who they are and their rights and enjoy all of this. So they cannot be under the law. They can't be under the law. Sons cannot be under the law. Sons cannot be under the law. You can't be that alone. No, 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 you can't be that alone. It's a level of maturity. It's a level of maturity. And you know what? Eh? The level of this maturity also brings a level of relationship with God and fellowship. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, when a child is a child, if daddy, 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 anything daddy says he does, anything daddy says he does, he cannot talk to daddy at daddy's level. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's a, when you start be growing up to maturity, to maturity, to maturity, what happens is that you start talking to daddy at daddy's level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. At his level of reasoning. By the help of the Holy Spirit, I talk to my father at his level of reasoning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. We, we reason together. We reason together. We reason together. We talk. We talk. But at the end of five, you cannot talk with your daddy. You talk to your daddy. And your daddy talks to you. <laughs> They're not between talking to daddy and talking with daddy. Yeah. Lord of business are still talking to God. Oh Lord, house. Oh Lord, car. Oh Lord, wife. Oh Lord, children. Oh Lord, family. Oh Lord, business. Oh Lord, money. My father, my maker. Bless me now by fire. Settle me now. You are talking to God. But there are souls who talk with God. 
Lord, thank you for another new day. I give you praise and glory. I just want to worship you. As they are talking with God, as they are talking with God, the Lord is also talking back to them. Their spirits are open. And when they are talking, they are hearing scriptures in their spirit. The Lord is talking back to them. They are seeing their, the Lord is speaking from scriptures to them. And then the Lord is speaking to their spirit audibly. They have a rapport with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? What the Lord does for you is that He makes you a slave and He makes God your master. So you can only talk to God and God will talk back to you. But what sonship does to you is that it makes God have a fire. Say that the spirit bear to that written in our spirit, never will cry what? Abba, Father. Abba is a Greek word that means daddy, a fondly name of calling daddy. When you have entered sonship, you are not talking to God. You are now talking with daddy. Abba, Father. It's relationship, it's conversation, it's dialogue, fruitful dialogue. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Now, what is the law? Galatians 3, verse 24. We use King James and Bible in basic English. It says, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Is it this? BB says, So the law has been, has been a servant to take us to Christ, so that we might have righteousness by faith. The law is what? The law is the schoolmaster or slave, which makes us see how bad sin is, makes us see that we cannot save ourselves, and takes us to Jesus for salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. As born again children of God, we begin as children, and this makes us live under the dictates of the law. But we are not to end as children. Adoption makes us live and operate above the law in the grace of God and in the fullness of our rights, authority, and privileges in Christ Jesus. Adoption makes us mature sons in Christ. It makes us what? Mature sons in Christ. Adoption is that which gives us and makes us sons of God and allows us to be led by the Holy Spirit. You see, if you are still looking for who to give you direction, who to give you prophecy, who to tell you answer, like the lady who came to meet me and said she wants me to confirm if the man is her husband or not, that is childishness. It's childishness. And it comes a lot of risks attached, especially when you are meant to be a son. You become a hazard to your parents and become a hazard to yourself. Adoption opens up to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Once we have been entered into the, into, we have received the revelation of adoption, because it's already been there, then we are opened up to the leader of the Holy Spirit. We can be led by the Holy Spirit. At that point, we are mature. We can take decisions for ourselves. That is why when people start behaving like sons, what happens? They begin to take decisions for themselves. Key decisions for themselves. They tell you marriage is not for boys, it's for men. Why? Because you have to be able to make decisions to marry. Remember when I was getting married, there was a man who met me in my tailor's shop and he said, ah, you are strong, you have mind too. I said, what is there? What do you mean? He said, you are strong, you have mind. He said, me, I have a job. At least I'm renting a house and I pay for my rent. I have a car. I'm reasonably comfortable. But to take this step you are taking, no mind to take it yet. I don't have the mind. I, have, I don't have the mind to take it yet. To take it yet. Because sonship is synonymous with what? Decision making. And you can only make decisions when you are being directed rightly in your mind. And you know what I'm saying? Yes. If you are not settled in your mind, if you are somebody who is not a person of focus and of, 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 of right sense of judgment, you cannot make decisions. So also, if you are not a person who is tuned, your spirit is led by, is one with the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit, you cannot make decisions as a child of God. You will keep looking from prophet to prophet, apostle to apostle, and tell me where I'm going to get married to, tell me the job I'm to go into, tell me the nation I'm to live in. You keep looking for guidance from people when you are supposed to be getting guidance from the Holy Spirit. One of the proof of childhood is that you cannot be led by the Holy Spirit because you don't know His voice. <laughs> and, that's, and so you keep looking for His voice through people. 
You look for prophets for direction. You look for evangelists for leading. You look for apostles for, for, for confirmation. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I used to look for confirmation from, from believers in the Lord. Amen. But as I grew it, at the point in time, I, I stopped looking for confirmation. Because when you look for confirmation, you end up in confoundation. <laughs> you be confounded. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so, I get that confirmation from God. When he gives me a word, he also confirms that word. The Bible says, the mouth of two witnesses, the word is established. The word of God is all my witness. I cannot say it. When he gives you the first time, he gives you the second time. In, in our teaching, in our Wednesday meeting, I got on that Wednesday when I got another confirmation for what God gave me in 2017. So what are you saying? It's a level of, it's a sonship operation. My spirit is open, is one with the spirit of God and is willing to be led by the spirit of God. And it's hazardous to remain a child, especially this time you live in. They will chew you. We are, there are wicked men on the, on the, on the pulpit now. Wicked men. Like cogas, foxes, predators. Looking for to predate is hazardous to be made a child. You have to open yourself and receive the revelation of adoption and open your spirit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 20 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. <laughs> what is the proof of sonship? Being led by the Holy Spirit, seen to. The Bible says, and after Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness of the temple. Why? Before the as he was being baptized, the Bible says, why he was being baptized? He was praying. Others were baptized and they were coming and going. But why nobody, you know, this was a start. I said, so far it will be so. This is a serious incident. It is a Kairos moment where heaven will be kissed. I cannot take this baptism for granted. Let us go and baptize to show that we are prepared. But for me, I don't need to prepare for anything. But I am coming to get in contact with destiny. So while I was being baptized, he was praying. That was as he was praying, the Holy Spirit came upon him in the bodily shape of a nova. And then the voice of came and said, This is my beloved son. The accreditation of sonship came poor. Even Jesus needed the accreditation of sonship to enter into the fullness of his Then how a son and you say you want to enter the fullness of mission, it's not possible to work. After that, he says, God says what? He was led by the Holy Spirit. If you do not accept the re and revelation of adoption and re the revelation of sonship, you cannot be led by the Holy Spirit. You must accept it first. And when you accept it, what happens? You are led by the Holy Spirit. And as you are led, it shows that you are practicing manifesting soul. <laughs> yes! Expectation of the creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What is the manifestation of the sons of God? Is that is that is the leading of the Holy Spirit and they are following the leading. What the Holy Spirit is leading and you are following the leading, you are manifesting. People may not look at you like manifesting, but you are manifesting. Yes, sir. they may say, hey, What is it? But you are manifesting. And even the devil knows that you are That's why he finds to ensure that you don't follow the Holy Spirit. Because he knows that what the Holy Spirit begins to lead you. And it begins Follow her, you are manifesting. What is the first place that the Holy Spirit led Jesus to? What the wilderness? It didn't lead him to the city. Many of us want to be manifesting some, but we want to start manifesting city. No! Manifestation does not start from the city. Manifestation starts from the wilderness. He has to test you before he, 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 he accredits you to the world. He has to test you before he shows you up to the world. When the product is manufactured, the manufacturer first does one, test the product. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was fasting. And one translation says, and again the devil came to tell me, it means that throughout that period of fasting, the devil was giving different tests. Different tests. But the final heavy, heavy duty temptations came at the one end of the fasting. The wilderness season is a season of testing and fasting, but it's also a season of leading. Most of us, we don't understand that the wilderness city is the most important place where the Holy Spirit leads us. Because that's when we hear, learn to hear him tito tito. In another capital, that's when we learn quietness and silence. But we say quietness and, 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 and confidence shall I strength be. That's when we learn quietness. That's when we learn to keep our spirit quiet and still. That when a big 
drops, we can hear the Holy Spirit. That's how we learn the principles of the living of the Spirit. That's how we learn the operations of the living of the Spirit. That's how we learn the dynamics of the living of the Spirit. And that's how we learn how to maneuver the challenges of life. Because when you go through the wilderness, no test that we come down with difficult than that. That's how God is using to survive, to keep us succeeding in Ghana. Yes. Because when you go to the wilderness, there is no test out that the wilderness that is stronger than that. No one, no one, no one, no one. And after the wilderness, as he came out, two things began to happen. The proof of sonship is manifestation. A manifestation is affected by the leading of the Holy Spirit. A manifestation starts with what? The wilderness. Even when you are in the wilderness, that is the most important part of your manifestation. You are still what? Manifesting. You are still what? Manifesting. The church is in a dying need of souls. Souls. Because this is the era of manifestation. We are not in the era of give me, give me Christianity again. We are not in the era of hungry, bad Christianity. We are not in the era, era of baby friendly, seeker sensitive Christianity again. No, we are past that era. We are in the era of souls. And God is cooking men in the wilderness. And I can't God is cooking men in the wilderness. Some of them are going through their 40 days. Some of them, it is 40 years experience. And after that experience, they will, God will showcase them to the world. And the world begins to ask, where have these ones been? Yeah. Yes, it is a manifestation of souls, but it comes to the cooking in the wilderness. And that's why years ago, 2006, then about, I said, God makes men in the cave and showcases their true faith. In the cave process, the Holy Spirit leads you in there. And that is where your manifestation actually believes, begins. What you see on the stage in the faith season is actually the end result of what has been done in the cave. What you see on the ring is what has been done in the ring before the ring. <laughs> what you see on the stage is actually the manifestation of what has been done in the backstage. Without the manifestation in the backstage, the manifestation of the on the main stage will become a flop. Even in the backstage, the Holy Spirit is causing his sons to manifest. Adoption makes us sons of God who enjoy only God as mature heirs of God. How many of us want to enjoy only God as mature heirs of God? How many of us are tired of being baby-friendly Christians, seeker-sensitive Christians, hungry bed Christians? How many of us want more? How many of us want all the privileges and all the rights? How many of us want to manifest fully in full form and full manifestation, full dimension? How many of us want that? Now, before I go pray, I'm going to pray. I want to pray for everyone who's under the sound of my voice. You know me, Jesus, you're not a person as you cannot enjoy those rights and privileges. It's only meant for those who have at least taken the first step of what? Making Jesus another person as you If you want to take this first step, please, I encourage you to do just say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected for me. Today, Jesus, I know that you, by your shedding your blood, you took away my sin. Today, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. I choose to serve and follow you the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone who has made this prayer. I thank you for accepting them in the beloved. Thank you for giving them the grace to serve and follow you the days of their life. And I thank you for the shall never turn their backs on you. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We are going to be praying this morning and say, Lord, I receive the revelation of adoption. God, I receive the revelation of adoption. I appropriate it in my life. I appropriate it in my life. And I manifest as your soul. Open your mouth and pray. Let his soul free katamari katosi kadata. Let the tembe hira kando no bosia. Let the tembe hira bonti ada. Let the tembe tembe deshwa paranda. We believe that you were blessed by this teaching. To listen to more teachings by Pastor Chimbi Ohahuna, please visit Grace Life Kami Podcast today. Send us an email via Chimbi Ohahuna Ministry at gmail.com. For more information about the ministry, kindly visit our website, Chimbi Ohahuna Ministry.org. Grace to you, Jesus. Is